Elodin W04 might look like just another mini PC, but once you see the ports, the upgrade options, the benchmarks, and what it can do with AI workloads, it starts to feel a lot more serious. Inside, it's running AMD's Ryzen 5 7640HS with six cores, 12 threads, a boost up to five gigahertz, paired with 32 gigs of DDR5 and a one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe. Well, at least that's the flavor I got. This comes in many different flavors. On paper, that is a laptop class setup, not some bargain bin office box. Up front, the IO is set up for day-to-day -day use. We've got a single USB-C port, two USB 3.2 Gen A ports, and an audio jack for headphones or speakers. On the back, we get the fun stuff. Another USB-C, but this one is USB 4 for fast storage or possibly even another display. A two and a half gig ethernet port. You know how much I love my multi gig ethernet. Also a one gig ethernet port. So we've got two network ports on this bad boy. Then two USB 2.0 ports for traditional data transfer, plus HDMI and display port for dual monitor setups. Really for a box this small, having USB four and dual NICs really opens the door for home lab and network projects too. The upgrade story is super solid. The top lid just pops off. And underneath you've got two SODIMM slots for RAM and two Gen 4 NVMe slots for storage. The RAM you can take all the way up to 64 gigs, maybe split an OS and data drive between the two NVMEs, or you could just drop in a bigger SSD later. Peladin even includes an extra NVMe thermal pad and heatsink in the box for that extra SSD. So adding a second drive is basically plug and play. Power draw on this is super low too. Roughly 12 watts at idle um, sitting at the desktop. Under load in synthetic testing and like benchmarking, it did pull up to 70 or 80 watts and landed right where a 7640HS CPU should be really. CPU scores, the Radeon 760M GPU scores and the storage, the memory, all those tell the same story that this is a solid mid-range platform with fast storage and plenty of RAM bandwidth. In the real world, that means if you're a medium to semi heavy office user with a lot going on at once, think tab happy browsers, Teams or Zoom calls, Outlook, Slack, Discord, spreadsheets, PDFs, and music in the background. This box can absolutely keep up. And with the dual NVMe slots and up to 64 gigs of RAM, plus those dual ethernet ports, it also makes a very capable little Proxmox or home lab node. Stuff like Home Assistant, Jellyfin, other media services, servers and even a couple of VMs. But the fun part for me is seeing how far we can push a mini PC like this with local AI. So with the ports, the upgrade path, the baseline performance out of the way, let's jump into the LLM testing and see what the W04 really can do. All right, so we tested benchmarks on our mini PC, our Pel Peladin. Peladin? Pel Aden, however you decide to pronounce that. We tried different benchmarks on our machine and now I wanna test it with LM Studio. So this is not marketed as an AI PC, but we've got a Ryzen CPU GPU combo with an NPU on board. So why not? I went ahead and downloaded LM Studio with a bunch of language models. We're gonna test three different metrics of measurement for this machine in language model testing. We're gonna test tokens per second, time to first token, and total tokens generated. And the three models we're gonna use are Gwen3, 4 billion parameter thinking model, GPT OSS 20 billion parameter model, and the big boy Llama 3 70B on this mini PC. So the biggest one, Llama B, uh, Llama 3 is 26 gigs. So it should barely fit on system RAM. The 20B, the GPT model is really only 12 gigs, so it should be fine. And then Gwen 3 is like two and a half gigs. The entire language model should fit completely on the GPU allocated RAM for this mini PC. So let's get into it. I've got three prompts, one that'll test tokens per second, time to first token, and then total tokens generated. So we're gonna start a new chat and we're gonna start here. I do have a power meter plugged into this mini PC 
here, this mini PC is plugged into there. So we're gonna take a look at how much the power draw is while this is doing its thing. So it's thinking and like instantly goes up to 70 watts. That's to be expected. That's about what I was getting in the full multi-core benchmark testing was 70, more than that, it was like 77, 78 watts. Wow, you are really thinking a lot. Oh my gosh. Reasoning on that is just unnecessary. Two and a half minutes. All right, so we're looking at 21 tokens per second. 21.28.33 to the first token. I want to use a different prompt though to come up with time to first token. Explain the difference between machine learning, deep learning, and neural networks with examples. And it's probably going to sit here and think for a long time again because that's a deep question. Yeah, we're still getting 70 watts. 0.3, so half a second to the first token. 0.30. And then total tokens generated. Wow. So looking in the thinking here, it is remembering back to the first prompts that I put in place, which were use exactly six sentences. There's things in here that says don't use bullet points, list or markdown formatting. So it's remembering or what I prompted and the output that I expected originally. Interesting. 2247 tokens. All right, I don't know if that's good or bad. Next, we are going to load up GPT OSS. Let's delete our previous chats and we'll put in those same prompts. We're only getting about 55 to 58 watts now. Ooh, so I remember the other one here was also under a second. It might have been the same at 0.3. Let's ask it this same question now. Yeah, we're still only getting about 56 watts. So that's nice to see that it's not pegging it completely, but it's taking a little bit longer to actually process here. 0.68. All right, so about twice as long as the first model. And now we'll do the total token generated prompt. And we're getting about 60 watts with this one. 56, 58. It just knew it. It didn't have to think at all. 183 tokens. So that's a pretty basic answer. Interesting to see the difference there. So I'm going to cancel. I'm going to go ahead and delete this chat. And we're going to eject that model and go for the big boy. 70 billion parameter llama three. This is probably going to take a while. Oh, oh my, oh, oh, that's gross. 73 watts. Oh man, I can't even. That is fucking painful. All right, we're going to have to hit stop on this. I'm not going to sit there and 1.2 tokens per second. 26 seconds to the first token. See how big of a difference that makes? Holy shit. All right, let's go to the next. All right, the next prompt here. Explain the difference between machine learning, deep learning, neural networks with examples. 40 watts, 50 watts. I'm not going to be able to do the total tokens generated. It's going to take too long. All right, we're going to hit stop on that. 16.24 seconds. This is probably a horrible idea. All right, we're at 58 watts, 53, 54, 65, holy cow. It's going, it's going. All right, I turned off the filter, the, yeah, the filter or whatever. I don't know if you can hear that, but I heard that fan ramp up. 190 tokens, really? And that took 11, almost 12 seconds of the first token. So it was a little bit faster, 1.3 tokens per second. That took like four minutes or longer. Well, those are interesting results. And I'll play with more of this later off camera. I wouldn't call this an AI PC. It's definitely not better than a machine with a dedicated GPU. All right, so the next test that we're gonna do on this little box is gonna be on gaming. If you don't know me, I'm not a big gamer. There's a couple of games that I enjoy playing, but today we're gonna test the gaming performance of this mini PC. Well, what's a better way to do this than with CS2. When I did this previously, I had OBS running in the background and I was just able to screen capture everything, but I realized that that does impact the performance of the machine that we're working with. Instead today, we've got a second camera, this guy, that's going to just capture everything that we've got going on. So this game, when I loaded it up, it loaded into medium settings. So that's really where we're going to start. And we'll see how hard we can push this before it really freaks out. All right. So we're looking at 100 FPS at least. And I don't have any audio through this. We're getting over 100 FPS, 100, 110, between 90 and 110. It's kind of hard to tell because of the counter is. And I'm dead again. That's enough of CS2 in medium. Let's pump it up real quick. We're going to go to very high. So we're getting 60 FPS here. And this is just running around. Ooh, we're down to 40, 40 to 50 FPS shooting while I do it. Oh, I think that's my own guy. That's not. 
and it died. 40 to 50 FPS on the high setting. I think there was one more. There was one that was like ultra, right? Let's do that and see if we can burn this machine down. Yeah, we're looking at 29 FPS even on the loading screen. Okay, that was very high. Custom. Ooh, you can hear that fan ramping up. Let's go down to low because custom didn't load for some reason. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be hot garbage. We're at 70 FPS loading screen, 200 at the splash screen. We're over 100 here. Anyway, we're getting over 100 FPS here. You get the picture. It's definitely doable, definitely playable on even medium to high settings. Now is the game that I wanna play that I'm really excited to play because I love playing this game. And we're also gonna test some latency on Forza Horizon 5 using a controller. So we're running at medium settings. We're getting 59 to 60 FPS. GPU usage on this is showing pegged at 97 to 98%, which is to be expected considering the GPU is really part of the CPU in this system. It's not a dedicated graphics card. That being said, the fan is not going crazy on this thing. Like, you would expect it to. I could totally play this in this setting. I'm getting, yeah, consistently getting 55 to 60 FPS here. Switch that down to, ooh, oh, we can go up to 180. All right, I mean, we're still really only getting about 60 FPS here, and this is on medium. I guess that's to be expected. We'll go down to 45 and see what it does. It's showing 45 with the GPU at 70%. Ooh, yeah. So that I'm getting a little bit more ghosting. The car doesn't look that bad. I mean, there is some aliasing there. Anyway, this is totally playable. I need to stop playing this because I'm going to get sucked into it. Graphics, and we'll go to, go to fucking Ultra. It does need restarted though. Oof. GPU is pegged at 99%, but still only getting 45 FPS. But all of the graphics on this look amazing. So is it usable for gaming? Absolutely. I wouldn't recommend pushing it to its limits. It's now calmed down. The fan stopped spitting super hot, but it's, it's totally doable. And you know what? I'm wondering, because we can take that lid off. Ooh, ooh, that helps got a lot of heat that's built up in there. So if you are gonna use this for gaming, realistically, let's see if we can show it here. Nope, you're not gonna see that at all. So realistically, you could take off that removable lid that has the magnets on it that's uh, just stuck in place to help with some of that heat exhaust. All in all, I think it's a good little box for gaming. It would work great for Steam. Yeah, so let's wrap this up already. So after all the benchmarks and gaming, the part that really surprised me with the W04 was the AI work. On this little Ryzen box, I was seeing around 21 tokens per second on a 4 billion parameter model at roughly 70 watts. About 12 tokens per second on GPT OSS 20B, so 20 billion parameter, at around 55 watts, and even managed about 1.2 tokens per second on a 70 billion parameter monster Llama class model at roughly 70. 73 watts. Time to first token on the smaller model stayed well under a second, which makes them feel instant in actual use. In practicality, the mid-grade 20-ish billion parameter models really are the sweet spot here between useful language models and machine capacity. For a mini PC with no discrete GPU, those numbers land right in the pretty freaking usable zone that a lot of people aim for with those local LLMs, especially on the 4B and 20B models. You're not matching a high-end desktop GPU, obviously, but you're also not burning 300 watts and a full ATX case just to run local AI that keeps your data in your network and in your control at a reasonable cost. So if you've been wondering whether a box like this is only good for office work and light home lab stuff, I'd say no because this can absolutely pull double duty as a small AI playground. It handles day-to-day -day productivity, some medium load games, home lab services, and still has enough headroom to run meaningful local models. I'll have links in the description for the W04 and this specific model I tested and all the benchmark models that I ran if you wanna try and reproduce something like this on your own. If you learned something today, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And I'll see you nerds on the next one.